And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. We certainly welcome you to this time that we're sharing with you out of the Word of God. I guarantee you that if you stay tuned, you're bound to be blessed. I invite you to come with us into a live service where the preaching of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is about to begin. Can I drink strong drink? You want me to not eat from the grapevine. You want me to not eat any unclean thing. You want me to do all this because he is supposed to be a Nazarite. Do you not understand what is happening here? There is restriction that is being placed on Manoah's wife, on Manoah's wife simply because of the destiny of somebody else. Do you not understand that there are seasons in life that make us where God puts the squeeze on us? There are seasons in life where we feel confined, where we feel restricted, where we feel like we can't move. Do you not understand that there are seasons that God gives to us where God is limiting what we can do? But do you not understand also, baby, that it has nothing to do with you? Do you not recognize that this woman was restricted? This woman had to sacrifice. This woman had to give up some things simply so that she could conceive somebody. But it wasn't just somebody. It was a man who was birthed for the purpose of delivering the Israelites from the Philistines. Now, 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 this is not part of my message, but I, I just saw something that is very, very, very interesting. Because up in verse 1 in Judges, it says, Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord, who? It says, so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. The Lord delivered them into their enemy's hands for 40 years. The Lord gave them over to the enemy for 40 years. But then as we go down in verse 6, it said that the, the baby was born to do what? To deliver. Now, I always ask myself that question, and I know the answer. But isn't it strange that the Lord would deliver the, a people over into an enemy, enemy's hands. He would do that, but then he bursts men to deliver. Do you not know that anytime God is getting ready to deliver a people, he always sends a man? The children of Israel were in bondage to Pharaoh. And God, God called Moses and said, I want you to go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Anytime God gets ready to do something with the people, he always sends a man. But to get back to my point, that this woman who wanted so badly to birth a child, she didn't realize that she was birthing purpose. And because she was birthing purpose, she did not realize that she could not do everything that she wanted to do because her destiny was tied to the destiny of somebody else. Do you not know that her actions could affect the outcome of the baby? Had she drunk wine? Had she drunk? Listen, listen, listen. Had she drunk wine? Had she not followed the steps of the Nazaritic law? then Samson would have come out just like every other baby. He wouldn't have been set apart because he wouldn't have been under the Nazaritic law. He wouldn't have been set apart. And if he was not set apart, God couldn't have anointed him in his hair because his hair is where his strength came from. 
Understand, stop thinking that everything that's going on in your life is so haphazard. Do you not realize that if God numbers every hair on your head, every single thing that goes on in your life is numbered? That's why the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered. Baby, stop sitting there thinking that your life is out of control. It's out of control to you because you don't control your life. But understand that once you say yes to God, Once you say yes to God, <laughs> let me show you something. Let me show you something. That God, that, that God, this woman had to suffer sacrifice. This woman couldn't take part of something for a season. She couldn't do everything that she wanted to do for a season because she was directly responsible for the destiny of somebody else. I wonder, I wonder why it is that we're trying to find another job, but God won't let us off. I wonder why we pray for God to get me out of St. Louis, move me to Texas, move me to California, move me to Florida. But you find yourself right up here on 10191 Halls Ferry Road today. I wonder, I wonder what God is limiting for you. I wonder what God is restricting for you simply because it has nothing to do with you. Do you not know that you have to see that your life, that we are connected in this world? Do you not, you have to see that everything that you do as an ambassador for Christ, everything that you say as an ambassador for Christ, everything, every move that you make, Somebody is dependent on it. Y'all not hearing me this morning. This woman couldn't do anything for a season. For a season. Simply because she was going to birth somebody of destiny. Think it not strange that there might be seasons where God has you in a box. Simply because the destiny of somebody else is on the line. Let me go back to my point. Do you not realize this? That when you say yes to God, you say no to your life. See, we get so happy about, we get so happy about church. We get so happy about Christianity. We get so happy about it. But there's reality to it that people don't understand. And here's why I say that. If you understood what this walk is called Christian life, if you understood it for real, for real, if you understood it in its totality, you would not be worried about the isms and schisms that you face. You would not be worried about all the problems that go on in your life. Because the reality is this. When you say yes to God, you are signing up not for a relationship, but for a covenant. When you say yes to God, you are literally saying, God, I recognize that you died on the cross for my sins. And because you sacrificed your life for me, I have to now sacrifice my life for yours. The problem with us in the church is that we say that, but we really don't mean it. Because the moment that God asks us to do something that is a little bit uncomfortable, we say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, pass this cup for me. And God said, no, 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 baby. When you joined me, when you covenanted yourself with me, when you took my oath, you, gave, you took away your cup. And you replaced it for my cup. The problem is my cup does not always tell you where you're going when you want to know. So many of us don't understand why we're in certain places in life. And God said it's simple because your life is not about your life. Your life is about my purpose for your life. And my purpose for your life is to impact or to touch somebody else. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we feel so boxed up, if we can't do everything that we want to do. Because there's somebody out here. 
There's somebody in your family. There's somebody in your home. There's somebody on your job. There's somebody in a grocery store. There's somebody's destiny depends upon you staying in that box for a season. I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but don't in your don't think that I'm in St. Louis just because I have nowhere else to go. Please don't make that mistake. Please don't make the mistake of thinking that I'm in St. Louis just because I surveyed all the states in the world. And this just so happened to be the warmest temperature. This so happened to be the most happening. No, 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 babe. No, no. I'm happy to be here. But understand that I'm here because God called me to be here. And God called me to be here because he recognizes Lucian. There's somebody's destiny out there that depends upon you being in this box. <laughs> Baby, if God, if, if God releases me today, I'll be on that first plane to Phoenix, Arizona. The first one. The first one. The first one. The first one. Lord, the first one. Just release me, Jesus. But understand that your life, your life at times is restricted. That your life faces limitations for a season. But understand, it was just for a season. She wasn't going to be pregnant forever. She was going to be pregnant for nine months. It was just a season. Stop worrying about the season where God has you limited. <laughs> Do you recognize that it was because she was limited, it saved the life of her son? Not even that. Marjorie, do you not understand that because she was limited, not only did it save the life of her son, but it spared the life of an entire nation. Do you not realize that God does not save you for you? Do you not understand that God does not send you somewhere for you? Everything that God does in his kingdom is based on the life of somebody else. God did not come down on this earth for him. He came on this earth in the form of Jesus Christ for you, for me, for you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Understand that you and I have faced, faced certain seasons in life where God restricts us. Do you not realize that even as I'm thinking about it, even Jonah, when he was sent to Nineveh, he disobeyed, and you know the story, he was sitting in a whale. But, but, but here's, here's the thing, and, and, and let me see if I can get it, just so I can show you, because a lot of y'all, this is the show me state. We want to we see, we want proof, we want proof. We want proof. It's Prego. It's in there. Can't find it right now, and I don't want to waste too much time. But listen, when Jonah, when Jonah went into the belly of a whale. There was a sea master on the ship that ended up recognizing the glory of God simply because of Jonah being in the whale. Do you hear me? Do you hear that? That there was somebody, a boat master on the ship that recognized Jesus Christ, that recognized the power of God simply because when he because of what he saw when Jonah <laughs> when Jonah 
was in the belly of whale. Do you not know, Lord help me, do you not realize that even in your affliction, somebody is watching and somebody could see God just by what's going on with you and your affliction? The man was recognized God because of Jonah's affliction. Stop thinking that everything that goes on in this world under his microscope is about you. No, it affects you, but it's not about you. When will we realize, and I'm through, when will we realize that when we say yes to God, Jesus, I want you to get this, I want you to get this, I want you to get this. When we say yes to God, we are actually saying no to ourselves. What does that mean? What does that mean? When we say yes to God, we're giving, we're saying no to our dreams. We're saying no to our desires. We're saying no to our wants. We're saying no to our ego. We're saying no to our control. When we say yes to God, we're saying no to us. It's no wonder. If you, if you get a hold of this, if you get a hold of what I just said, you won't need a therapist to, make you, uh, to, to help you sleep at night. You won't need to pop pills to help you sleep at night. You won't need to hang at the bar just to get away from all the stresses of life. You won't need it because you recognize that your steps are ordered. You recognize that everything that you are going through is because it passed through Jesus first. Do you not realize that Job's affliction was because of a conversation that God had with the devil? In other words, nothing can get to you before it passes through God. And everything that comes your way has already passed God's desk and he signed an executive order. He signed an executive order for your affliction. But guess what? He signed an executive order for your affliction. Not for you, but because there's a plan that you know not of. It's not for you, but there's a, there's a plan that you don't have any idea. It's, there is no way in the world that Manoah's wife knew that by her being restricted for a season, that it was going to save the lives of millions, 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 millions through her son. Who is, your who is your restriction saving? Who is your restriction? Who, if God is boxing you up, if God is limiting you, if God has you in an area that you, if God is making you sacrifice, who is tied to that sacrifice? The short answer is you don't know. That's why you need to obey the word of God, because you don't know. I guarantee you, see, the, see the, 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 the power of this book, the power of the Bible, is that we can read the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then we have a tendency to be arrogant and say, child, if she knew, it, why didn't she just praise God? Because you see how it ended. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then somewhere, somewhere in heaven, there's an angel saying, why, are, why, why is Daryl not praising? Why is Daryl not praising? Because I could see the end. The issue is we can't see it. And so we get down on ourselves. We get depressed. We get discouraged. We get broke. We get busted. We get disgusted. We get all this because we can't see the end. But do you not know that that's why we say we have the victory? Because we know that God has a plan for our lives in the end. Restriction for somebody else's destiny. 
You need to understand. There's somebody who there's somebody who stayed in this house, who stayed at this church because somebody else's lives depended on it. There's somebody who who wants to give up a ministry, but you can't because somebody's life depends on it. There's I know, there's somebody here that's trying to give. I feel it in the spirit. There's somebody here that can't get released from a job, and it's because somebody's life depends on it. Don't be discouraged. Just recognize that God is restricting you for a season. He's limiting you for a season. He's putting you in a box for a season so that you could bear forth a son whose purpose is to deliver millions of people. Stand on your feet. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just begin to thank God for this word. Begin to thank God. Worship him. I know it doesn't always feel good. I know it doesn't always feel great. I know restriction doesn't always feel the best. Limitation never feels good because we always trick ourselves and we say, you know, this doesn't feel right. This can't be God because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Woo! And we try to quote our way out of certain things. And God says, that's great. You can quote it, but understand this is a season. But it's designed to bring forth, it's designed to bring forth your destiny. Lift your hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name, God. If there's anybody here who is not saved, and you recognize that you want more than a relationship, but you want a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ, somebody is going to be available here at the altar. To pray with you. To make certain that before you leave here, that you know that you're saved, that you know that you, he has entered your life. Do me a favor and just ask somebody next to you, do you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Go ahead. Ask the person next to you. And if they can't look you in the eye with, with an affirmative yes, invite them down. We thank you. Or if you're here and you're saved and you want to connect yourself to this house, Somebody will be here to welcome you. Come here, son. Praise God, executive pastor in San Francisco Temple. We have brother Jacobus Lewis Bay, who has accepted the Lord into his life as Lord and Savior. Big treasure. What's your name, sir? William Ellis. He said he would like to be a member of this house. Do we accept him, San Francisco, Tim? I want to say something. Stay right there. Because as you were singing, no, no, stay, you, you, you can get down. No, no, you can get down. Sit down, get down. Okay, that's fine. We can, we can rap. As you were singing, God, I saw you. And God said, 
you stepped into a new season in your life. God anointed you from very young. Six years, when you were six years old, the hand of God was on your life. And the enemy has caused you to do this. But he never forgot the stamp that he put on you at six years old. God said, there is a season that you're entering into where God is going to draw young men through you. They tread. What God is going to do in the young people, you're going to be a big part of it. I don't know whatever he's going to do, but what he's, what he's going to do, he, you're going to be a big part of this. What you did, what you did today, it wasn't just joining a church. You were launching your destiny this, today. God bless you. I want some young... Thank you so much for joining us today. I just know that you enjoyed the good word of the Lord, and we certainly invite you to come back and be with us in our next session. By the way, if you want to see us live, we are here at San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly, located at 10191 Halls Ferry Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. If you need information, feel free to call the office, 314-388-3300. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you again. In the meantime, be blessed and know that the Lord is up to something good in your life.